Hey. 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 <laughs> Back to party drop, mode. You about to drop some bars? Bars. Bars, we, bars. We all day. Bars yeah. in here. When we get like a strong statement, punchline, we just say bars. That's yeah. <laughs> that's it makes no impact, sense, but we just you know? like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's going on, people? Um, welcome to the we apologize for um, last week. There was some technical difficulties and light was not feeling very well. So I. Uh, but we back. But we back. Yes. We back. We back. So um, today, I just want to get into it real quick. We're going to introduce the topic. We have special guest, um, former police officer Derek Parker in the house. He has over twenty years of um, experience in the police. Uh, Oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. we're gonna talk about him. So we will talk about oh, him. Yeah, we did a Google search and some things popped up and we got some explaining <laughs> to do. <but. laughs> got some explaining to do. No, but um, so of course we have all this stuff going on in the news right now and the current events with the Eric Garner case, Mike Brown, all of this, and that's basically the reason for the show. We're gonna talk about police brutality and what can we do to make it better or make a change, what have you. Um, the phone number to call in is 877-760-1422. Uh, don't call right this second, but in a few minutes, we're gonna open up the phone lines. So, um, Greg, what's up with the weekend? We we hung out a little bit, so we yeah, usually yeah. do a quick as a group, recap. As a group, as a group. Yeah, the Yak Radio fam. Yeah, it was, radio happy radio. birthday, um, Mal. Yeah, well, she's, uh, she's officially grown, 25th birthday. Yeah, so oh, she man. had a nice little function and... It was crazy because it was... When I saw it was like all of Yak Radio dressed up. You that know, was nice. Like that we was all nice. dressed up, you know. It clean. was a nice all of uh, black affair and I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah it was nice. Great it was event, nice. Great. I had to go shopping, get a dress, you know, all of that stuff. Just for you, Mal. Yeah, so, yeah. A lot, yeah. Of, a, lot of, a lot of ladies inside there too. That's what's up. Mal got a lot mm-hmm. of ladies. Fellas, if you're looking to hook up... What? Uh, how that lady changed? She got a lot of friends. <laughs> I'm just saying, she she know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was fun, and um, I had a really good time. Everything everything was pretty good. Oh yeah. So other than that, the only other thing I did was um, Saturday. I went to see Mike Epps. In, uh, oh, how was that? Oh my god. <laughs> well, it was pretty good, um, except. One comedian, I don't remember his name, he kind of got booed a little bit. Booed? That's messed like up. Like one of the openers? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He got, I, I kind of felt a little bad for him, but um, uh, that will just, I guess, mold him. <laughs> and he just needs to get it a little bit tight before, you know. Uh, what's his name? Oh, I, we're, not I, gonna, we're not gonna go there. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so um, that was pretty much it for the weekend for me. And, uh, you know laundry you know like a little day-to-day yeah. <laughs> day-to-day stuff so um okay this this topic uh we're gonna skip the set it off today and uh mr parker you know i um, believe he has some business to tend to so he is not going to be able to stay for the whole show possibly but maybe so um <laughs> he's busy he's busy you know, but he's, he's, here. He's, he's here he's here and we That's appreciate right. you coming so um should we just get into it yeah all right yeah. so um derek parker i'm gonna is there, okay you can speak into the mic and um introduce yourself to the people my name is derek parker i'm the former hip-hop cop for the nypd i'm now retired working in all the clubs yes uh-huh. So he has a lot of information and I wanted him to come on because everyone right now, um, emotions are very high. (laughs) Tension is very high right now um, amongst the people just everywhere because of what's going on in the media with the news and, you know, Eric Garner being shot, I mean, the chokehold and, you know, Mike Brown with the shooting and the rioting and everything. So... I thought it would be a good idea to have. Okay, already. we already. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yak Radio. Hello. Hey, what's up? Who's this? Who's this? Ronald. 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 Hi. 
How are you? Ronald, you he he can hear you, Derek. Hey, what's up? Derek, Derek, what's up? Derek, what's up? What's up? You know, you're doing a great radio rant. Well, Mara, we're we're interviewing Derek. What's up, man? You know, he knows what's up. We go way back. What's up? He knows what's up. Oh. Well, thanks for calling. Do you want to um say anything about the topic? Yeah, you call uh, me. You know what? I'm not going to say anything about the topic. You guys know how to feel. You guys you know how to feel about what, what's going on, you know? So, I just want to give a shout out to my man, Derek. All right, no problem. Mm-hmm. We should share that. He's the best guy to talk about, you know? He's been doing it all. Okay. Right, yeah, Ron. All right, Ron, what area code are you calling from, Ron? I'm going to your home. I'm going to your man. I'm up to you right now. <laughs> I'm going to your home. Oh, you at the gym. Okay, get back to your workout. We'll <laughs> stay tuned in. All right, cool. All right, well, well, thanks for calling. Stay tuned in while you're working out, okay? All right, good night. Yeah, radio on the go. All right, already. Okay, here we go. So, um, hmm. Okay, uh, we were talking about. I, I just totally lost my chance, but the whole um, police brutality thing, I wanted you to come on because you have experience in the force and maybe we could kind of shed some light on some of the things that are going on. and Pick your brain. And- yeah, pick your brain and <laughs> like what we could do to kind of prevent it because my thing with these cases, um, I have an issue with every time, uh, you know, a person of color is gunned down. It seems like, maybe it's just me, but the media tends to always try to pull something out about them to make them look bad. Like, you know, with with Mike Brown, I understand that, you know, he did whatever he did in the store before the shooting, that he um, had a little run-in with the store clerk. Well, supposedly he robbed the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He ain't robbed the store. (gasps) Wait, he, ro- wait, he might have taken a few things, up. but robbing hold the store. Right, no, 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 wait. but robbing to me is like, okay, you pull out a gun. And all right, you, you know what I'm saying? He committed a larcy. Okay, see, okay. We, all he right, that's better. Okay, so he robbed. <laughs> like, don't look at was, me like that. No, because, <laughs> and, and you know what, robbery comes in different forms, because if he went into the store and took items, and the owner was in fear of his life, then it's robbery. It's not a larceny. Oh. You follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If the owner said, hey, look, man, what are you doing? And the guy goes, listen, I'm taking this stuff, what are you going to do about it? And the guy goes, I was very scared. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So it, it elevates it to a different level. That's the difference. See, wow. we didn't know this. See, this is this is why, okay. So now, although he might have, you know, committed a crime, whatever, um, it just is that a reason to get a little trigger happy. Well, no. Now you gotta remember there were different circumstances in that particular case. Allegedly. Suppo- allegedly. Supposedly, he, he supposedly, when the cops saw him and his friend walking down the street, they approached him. Mm-hmm. And when the cops approached him, the cop got out of the car to stop him and he got into some violent struggle, supposedly. This is what was been alleged. Mm-hmm. And the cop shot him and he killed him. Now, in my opinion, was it probably excessive? Probably, yes, it was. The, the cop was a one man unit. He didn't have his uh, taser with him mm-hmm. because every cop's not trained to have a taser. Oh. In New York City, most of the Supervisors carry the taser, not the cops, because if the supervisor has to be the one that uh, directs and um, has to explain why he or she used it, so that's why they give it to the supervisors rather than giving it to cops, because cops would tase everybody if that were the case. Well, maybe they should. I don't know. I mean, that's what I wanted to know. Like, with, with tasing, I guess it'd be better. I don't way. Get it it could have been, it could have been worse because if you tase someone and they have an, a reaction, they have a, oh, or they have a heart attack. Yeah, it could, you know, it could be bad circumstances that way as well. But I don't think I don't know if you guys remember years ago there was a lieutenant who tased a guy from a roof, and the guy was a mentally disturbed person when he oh, tased him mm-hmm, because he mm-hmm, thought he was in danger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He fell head first into the ground and he, he died. And then the lieutenant ultimately, when the department and the press crucified him. He committed suicide and killed himself. Wow! Because wow. he could, and I knew him. I worked with him, the lieutenant. Mm. Wow! Yeah. So it's like a, a, you know, tricky type of thing. Um, so now, a lot of people are up in arms about all, you know this because it seems to happen to a little too frequently 
to um, men of color and even some women I've seen, you know, <laughs> on YouTube video, Facebook, there was um, one videos. situation. There's a lot, a lot of, videos. of videos. I saw one video where, now let me ask you this. If you, okay, come to my home and ring my bell, do you have the right as a cop to come into my home? Like, if you didn't, you know, because I saw something on YouTube that disturbed me, like, to the core, and the cop went to the guy's house, and I think he was accusing, I don't know, he was just, like, he pushed his way in the door. There like, no reason, no explanation as to why. And then he's like, okay, you're coming with me, I'm taking you in, but for what? Like, what type of training? I mean, can, is that acceptable? No, the police officer cannot enter into your home like that. He has to have a warrant if he's going to arrest you for other reasons. However, if you invite him in, that's differently. But No, he wasn't invited. But the, cop, <laughs> the cops can't push the way into your apartment. If you say that here, like, let's say I got a, a report that something happened here and you say it didn't happen here and it, it didn't, I would knock on your door if you said it didn't and I couldn't prove it or I had no suspicion to believe it then I would just leave, you know what I'm saying? But they have no right to push in your door like that. They can't. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And um, I was having a conversation. Now, it's obviously a racial divide in, you know, a lot of these cases. Um, I was having a conversation with a physician. I won't say his name, but um, he... Kind of, I, I kind of said to him, like, like he was questioning um, the riots and why do people have to, you know, riot and destroy everything and blah, 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 whatever the case is. Now, I said to this man who is Caucasian, I said, look, I said, I'm not saying that it was correct for them to do that, but I understand the frustration. Frustration is one thing, but looting is another. <laughs> And I don't agree with that. I don't really agree that you should go into your own neighborhood and loot right. the stores that people have worked so hard to get. Mm -hmm. And they they treat you. They, they, these stores serve your community. Right. Whether it be the Koreans or Ch Chinese or the liquor store or the local chicken place. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't really have a right to go in and loot those stores. No. If you have a problem and frustration with something and you want to demonstrate and you want to go and do it peacefully, I agree with that, but not looting stores. I don't think that's the right thing to do. Yeah, I, I felt bad. A lot of people lost, you know, businesses, and it wasn't really fair. And my whole thing is, as far as the um, frustration and taking it out on the neighborhood, well, that was stupid to me anyway. Like, if you're going to, you know, show some sort of, um, what's the word? Like, you know, you're upset and you want to show some sort of... Um, you know, uh, support for the cause or whatever. Destroying our whole neighborhood is <laughs> really yeah, not. It's, it's like, it's and the world is saying, look, these people are just going in their own neighborhood and they're destroying their own, uh, the businesses that are in their neighborhood. They're not coming to our neighborhood and doing this. Yeah. So what do you suggest other than protesting? Because This is what I wanted to ask you. Okay. Because um, a lot of times we know, um, I'll say ethnic men, men of color, black, white, Spanish, Indian, um, sorry, not white, but um, Indian, whatever, you know, like when the whole Taliban situation was going on, you know, everybody gets profiled at some point or another, you know, but if you are pulled over oh, yeah, it's by a police officer as a ethnic person, please tell the people <laughs> what is the best way to behave because I, sometimes I feel like certain people bring it on themselves. Like, yes. I, I mean, yes. if you start getting all rah rah with the police officer for yo, why you put you know catching like the attitude, then you know, I mean, they might get a little frustrated. So, um, for all the young men listening or females, whoever, just if you could just tell the people the best way to the deal with that. The first thing you do if a police officer pulls you over, you remain calm. <clears throat> and you give the officer your license and registration. You do have the right to ask, hey, officer, what did you pull me over for? If he or she refuses to tell you, then so be it. Once you get the summons and the ticket back in your car, the officer will explain it to you in most cases. That you ran a red light or you didn't have your seatbelt on <clears throat> or some other traffic violation. And then you have to go to court. And the summons will explain it. You could always go to court and argue, but what you should always do too, if you feel you're wrong, <clears throat> take a picture of the, of the light go back to the corner where the incident happened at because 
when you go to traffic court, these judges like to see that you have all the evidence to say that you didn't do what the officers say you did. Mm -hmm. And most, I've seen guys go to court where they say, look, this is the corner, it's really dark. How could the cops see me? The traffic light is here. And he didn't have a speedometer or one of those speed magnetometers, mm -hmm. whatever you call it, mm -hmm. that they calculate you how fast you were driving or your seatbelt wasn't on or whatever it is. So it's better for you to go to court and argue a case, but don't argue with the cop in the street. Mm -hmm. Because all that does is that it, it now, it brings it up to a different, it, it brings it to a different level. And then now all of a sudden the officer's gonna be out to protect himself because maybe you're wanted for something. And car stops are very dangerous for cops because they train you in the, the police department that car stops are one of the most dangerous things. That's why we have two officers, one's on the right, one's on the left, and they're watching because if you see, I'm sure you watch cops on TV, in other states where cops approach vehicles and they got shot because the guy was wanted for robbing a bank or maybe he just killed someone or assaulted someone and he's on the run. You know, maybe he has a warrant mm. and doesn't want to go back to jail. So you gotta be very careful in those cases. So in Eric Garner's case, let's talk about this for a second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because this is what's, you know, going on right now. Um, what? did they do i mean we obviously everybody kind of saw what they did wrong but yeah. what could have maybe prevented that whole situation well the biggest problem you had in eric garner case was that there was a, a condition which we get 311 calls on the on the uh, not 911 the 311 mm -hmm. where somebody complains about someone in the neighborhood doing some kind of quality of life problem selling cigarettes selling marijuana hanging out in the corner drinking playing loud music and what happens is that the police department has to pay attention to those complaints because what they do is they listen to them and if they get enough complaints, they have to mount an action. And what they do is they go out. In this particular case, with the Eric Garner case, there were several calls made by people in 311 about people selling cigarettes where he was. Mm -hmm. Now, if you read, the store owners said they didn't have a problem with Eric particularly, mm -hmm. but he had been arrested several times for selling cigarettes. See, but that's, sorry, that's that's what I was saying before. Okay, we know that he was arrested several times for whatever it was, but is that a reason to use the type of force, you know, the illegal chokehold that... No, what, what happened in that particular case, there was a breakdown of a lot of things. And the first thing was when the cops got to the scene and he, and they attempted to take him down, first of all, you can't resist arrest when the cops are going to arrest you. The cops can't just walk away and say, we're not going to arrest you, they have to. Number one, number two is, yeah, chokeholds are, are banned from the police department, but he was a really big guy. And when his officers decided to take him down, I guess they, they, they thought the best way to take him down was to grab him around the neck and bring him down. Now, there was a female supervising police sergeant there, and she was African-American. Mm -hmm. She should have took charge at the scene and said, hey, listen, guys, hold up. The guy can't breathe. Or there should have been, she should have taken charge to have, uh, uh, the situation could have been a lot different. If she had intervened, and maybe said to him, or maybe they could have sort of talked him a little bit, mm -hmm. or then she might have used other measures if it didn't work. But when he said he couldn't breathe, they should have immediately let him go. Um, once they had him on the ground and the EMS people showed up, because I watched the video over and over again, and when the EMS guy showed up, they did a horrible job by not treating mm -hmm. this guy, or not doing they anything They were just standing around. It looked yeah. like they were just standing around. But, but she was the overall boss in the scene. I'm going to say there were other sergeants there. Now, people don't understand if Pantoliano, the cop, was under her supervision, mm -hmm. then she should have took charge. But there were probably two other sergeants there. And I don't even think they took charge of the scene where they should have just controlled it. And they didn't. And the end result was that this man, Needlesey, died. And the EMS people did really a horrible job as to treating him. And the way they handled this whole thing was bad. Um, I heard, I'm, I'm not sure if this is true, but apparently his... Um Larynx was crushed. Is, is that true? No, I, I think he he. I, I, from, I'm not sure what the medical examiner ruled his death to be. She ruled it to be a homicide. Right. From the compressions on his chest. Crushed. Um, right. I think they said crushed he, larynx. It, I don't know if his larynx. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm not. I'm not really sure, so I don't want to say. But for those of you who don't know, that means your throat. Basically. Right. But right. he didn't have. <laughs> don't just say. No, I'm saying. Don't look at all the same. She she did rule it. She did rule it a homicide <laughs> and right. uh, about the compressions on his chest. So it it it, it was. For her, in her professional opinion, this is what it was. But like I said, Neil, see, there were mistakes made at the scene, and there was a policewoman there was African American, and she had overall charge where she should have took charge. Mm -hmm. That's the fault that I see of her, where she should have sort of stepped in and taken charge. And if you look in the video, she just laid back while these cops were yeah, doing any of us. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, so, okay. Um, hmm. All right, this is really interesting, and I'm, I'm really getting another perspective on this, and I hope the listeners are as well. We're going to take a quick um, musical break, and we're going to come back. I want the call, or the listeners rather, you can call in and ask, you know, questions if you would like. The phone number is 877-760-1422. It's not often that we have an opportunity to pick, you know, the brain of someone who has so much experience yes. in the force, so. And we definitely want to talk about the hip hop cop. We want to know what uh, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, about. Yeah. 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 Touch on that right quick too. <laughs> we, might, we might need like a whole other show for that. No, 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 we'll be right back. All right, we'll, we'll be right quick, back. Quick break. <laughs> 